In this demo, I'm going to show you how to create a virtual machine and how to connect to it from anywhere in the world. The first thing I'm going to do is just pull up my browser. And in the browser, I'm going to go to portal.azure.com. This is just the website that you manage all things in Azure from. I'm going to click on this virtual machines here on the left, and it's going to give me an option to create a new virtual machine. So I'm just going to go to create virtual machine. So it's a little easier to see. I'm going to collapse this middle pane here. On this create a virtual machine, it's going to ask just a handful of questions. And we're just going through the basics to get this created right now. But the first thing it asked me is what resource group do I want to put this in? A resource group is nothing but a collection of resources. All the components for the virtual machine, they're just going to be placed in this resource group. Well, I'm going to create a new one and I'm just going to call it VM resource group. Or you can name it whatever you like. But when I create this, just all the components are going to go in that resource group. What do I want to name the virtual machine? I'm just going to name it test dev VM. What region do I want this placed in? Depending on where you are in the world, where your users are, you can choose the region that you want any resource to be created in. So if I am in the Western US, I could choose West US. If I am in East Asia, uh, Japan, Canada, France, so anywhere in Europe, the US, Asia, uh, Brazil, uh, wherever you are in the world, you can choose a location that fits whatever your actual needs are. Pretty fascinating. I'm just gonna choose Central US. Now keep in mind, this is accessible from anywhere in the world. This is just where the resource will be created within Azure itself. So it's gonna live on hardware, in the central US. Do I need high availability to make sure if we have a failure of some type that this keeps running? We can define those options here. What operating system do I want? We could choose Windows operating systems. We could choose some derivative of Linux if we want it, like Ubuntu, Red Hat. So we have a lot of options there. Could even choose like Windows 10. You could choose an older server OS, like server 2012. Well, I'm just gonna click on Windows Server 2016, whatever OS is appropriate for what you're doing. What size do you want the virtual machine to be? That will just go to the virtual CPUs and how much memory uh, you wanna have assigned. And you can click this see all sizes and there is a long list of configurations that you can actually select from. Really depends on what your needs are more resources it has, the more it's gonna cost per month. You can see that reflected here. $106.58 a month. This is only $53.29 a month. So cost just varies depending on resources. And now I just need to set a username. And I'll set a password. So we have a username defined and we have a password. The last thing that I need to do on the inbound port rule, it just says what ports should this virtual machine allow inbound? Meaning how will I connect to it? I'm simply gonna use remote desktop. At a minimum, we are done. So I will click review plus create. Takes just a moment, but it's going to validate that we have all the required settings. Now I can simply click create and it's going to create the virtual machine. That is complete. So from start to finish, that took somewhere between two and three minutes, I would estimate for that entire process to complete. Now I'm just going to click this go to resource and it's going to open up the settings for my virtual machine. So this virtual machine, um, it's running, it has an IP address assigned to it. Now I wanna to connect to it. So I'm just gonna choose connect RDP for a remote desktop. And it's gonna let me download this RDP file. And I'm just gonna open that file. And now it wants me to authenticate. 
So I'm going to enter the credentials that we just set. And we'll just click OK. Yes. This is the virtual machine that's online that is now accessible from anywhere in the world. So whatever additional configurations you want, you go configure this like you would any other server in your environment, and it's accessible. So just incredibly rapid deployment allows for incredibly fast innovation. For that virtual machine, if you wanted to manage settings related to networking, disks, the size, any of those types of things, you can make configuration changes that are comparable to what you would have in an on-premise server. The infrastructure and the back-end hardware is just all managed by Microsoft, so I can completely focus on just the resources that I need to deliver to my users.